and we're up and doing. We're healthy and strong. You see, I'm talking about healing. Yes, there's healing. But I'm talking about God's gift of a better life for you. Everything better. Your life better. Your family better. Your profession better. Your spiritual life better. Your success better. Your achievements better. And your power, your strength, you will climb mountains. Tell your brother, tell your sister by your side, better. Say it now. Say it very well. Better things for everyone this coming year in Jesus' name. Okay, now you've told each other. Can you tell me too? You pray for me better, higher, stronger, healthier, holier, more powerful. As you wish for me, I wish all of you better. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because you have planned, you have provided, you have promised better things for every one of us. And we're asking, oh Lord, our lives will be better. Our blessings will be higher. Our lives will be richer. I will pray, oh Lord, you will do better things, greater things, stronger things, broader things for everyone in Jesus' name. Everything that downgrades is taken away. Everything that upgrades is brought into our lives. Make each of your people without exception better this coming year from today in Jesus name confirm it in every life in Jesus mighty name we pray we're coming to Isaiah chapter 56 and I'm reading from verse 5 Isaiah chapter 56 verse 5 even unto them Will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters? He'll give you a name, he'll give you a title, he'll give you an identity, he'll give you a personality better than the sons and of daughters. And I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm reading from verse 11. It tells us in verse 11 of Ezekiel chapter 36. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. You will increase. Your family will increase. Your business will be enlarged. And in your place of work, civil servants, there will be promotion in your life in Jesus' name. It says, I will settle you. You'll be settled. You'll not be shifted here and there. You'll not be moved here and there. You'll not be living in insecurity, and you'll not be living in uncertainty. The Lord, this coming year, will settle you. And I will settle you after your old estate. Think about that. Think about that. Every good thing you had in the past, you are recollecting them back. And then it says at the end of that verse 11, it says, and will do, and will do, somebody there, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Somebody help me shout better. Look at Hebrews 
chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're looking at verse 40. God having provided some better sin for us. In that chapter, it's been talking about Abel. It's been talking about Enoch. It's been talking about Abraham. It's been talking about Noah. And it's been talking about Sarah. It's been talking about the parents of Moses. It's been talking about Moses. And then it talked about Jacob and Joseph and Isaac. And he talked about all the prophets. And he told us, revealed unto us, all that God has done for them. Any of them. Every one of them. And now he says, God has provided some better things for us. As I look at the coming year, and I look at what God has said, and God cannot lie. God is faithful. God is a faithful God, mighty, powerful God. And when he decides something, it's going to be done. My young brother, my young sister there in the youth section, campus section, maybe you've had some challenges and you have been thinking, how is life like this? Cheer up now. I said cheer up now. Why Paul those tears away? I'm talking to an orphan there. I'm talking to a girl that doesn't have parents. So maybe you have parents, but they cannot take care of you. The heavenly father will take care of you. More than as the parents can take care of you, he will provide. He will supply. God has provided better things for you. There are times we've done our best. We've gone to, you know, the people who can help. Help physically, help spiritually, help in any way. And the help, even though it came, has not actually reached the point. We'll say, I'm all right now. This coming year, you'll be all right. Because God has provided some better sin for us that they without us should not be made perfect. They without us, without looking at the better things that the Lord has provided for you and for me, all the rest of humanity and the people that have been before us, they will not be complete without us. Can you imagine that the Lord is saying that all the other people, no matter who they are, in their assembly, in their congregation, at their united together, will not be complete without you? You didn't hear that one. Because you're not just an appendage. You're not just you know, a redundant person you'll be significant. Even the people in your family will know that they cannot be complete without you. Your life is going to be better. Your achievement is going to be better. Your testimony is going to be better. There were great testimonies this past year, but we're going to surpass all the testimonies we heard in Jesus' name. The topic today, God's gift of a better life for you. God's gift of a better life for you. Three things we're looking at. Number one, his offer of boundless grace. His offer of boundless grace. Number two, our offering of better gifts. Our offering of of better gifts. Point number three, the outpouring of his best. It's not just going to give you a trickle. It's not going to give you something at the bottom of the kettle. It's going to make it an overflowing blessing for you, outpouring for you, outflowing for you, overflowing for you, the outpouring of his best for the godly. I mean for something wonderful. I'm going to get something wonderful. This coming year is going to be a victorious year. And a glorious year for you, for me, for us all in Jesus' name. 
tell me number one the offer of boundless grace look at Romans chapter 3 in Romans chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 23 Romans chapter 3 I'm looking at verse 23 it says in verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace he wants to justify you he wants to tell the devil that all your sins are forgiven and you are just and justified in the sight of the Lord what do I do to have that pastor do I cry do I roll on the ground do I go to River Jordan? Do I drink holy water? Do I drink olive oil? Do I fast? Do I punish myself for the sins I've committed in the past? To have that justification, look at verse 24. Being justified, what's the next word there? Freely is for you. The grace of forgiveness is for you. And the grace of freedom is for you. And the grace of joy, joy untold and joy unlimited, the joy of salvation is for you from today. And being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission, removal, cleansing, and for the taking away of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. He takes away all your sins and he gives you the righteousness of Christ. He will do it. Look at First Timothy. In First Timothy, I'm reading from chapter 1. First Timothy, chapter 1. And I'm reading here from verse 14. It says in verse 14, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That's Paul. It was Saul, an injurious person, a terrible person, a wicked person. He will go into homes and arrest men and women. He didn't care for gender. He didn't care for anybody crying. He just wicks them into the prison. And if he wanted them to die, he will get the necessary papers and get rid of them. A man like that said, you find me in church, you find me in the kingdom, and you find me talking about Christ. He said, it's all of grace as you are there the grace of God covers you all the sins you have committed we read it in the Bible that's not just me talking and it says the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant it reaches you where you are and whatever you have done forgiveness has come salvation has come and it is with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Look at this, look at this. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to do what? To save sinners, to cleanse sinners, to forgive sinners. And you say you're a sinner, that's right. He came to save. And when we call him Jesus, we call him by his name. He is Savior. He's your Savior today. He said, to save sinners of whom I am chief. Of whom I am chief. Look at Titus. Grace has come. Abundant grace. Overflowing grace. Surpassing grace. Look at this. Titus chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared, has appeared, has appeared as the sun rises in the morning. And that sun rises for everyone and appears to all men. When the rainy season begins, as the rain appears and begins to fall, 
it doesn't exempt you. It doesn't exempt your house. Falls on everyone. Grace has now appeared. Grace is now available. You don't have to stay outside the kingdom. Come in. And as you come in, all your sins will be forgiven by the Lord in Jesus' name. All by grace. And he offers us, he offers you, he offers me boundless grace. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. And we were ignorant before. We didn't know this is right, that is wrong. Now the grace of God comes and he teaches us to be upright. And he leads us to be upright. Because the grace of God does not leave us how and uh, where it met us. If the grace of God does not make any change, then that grace is not necessary. But the grace of God turns our lives around for the better. It will turn you around for the better. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. In this present world, you will demonstrate the salvation of the Lord. You know, before the grace came, when temptation came, you just fell. You didn't have the power to say no. You didn't have the power to resist or to deny. But now grace has come. And grace is watching at the door. When the tempter knocks at the door, it says, don't worry to answer. Grace will answer for you. And then grace will say, who is that? He said, I'm a tempter. And this is my, my victim. I used to tell him to do this and do that. And grace said, I'm not living inside him. Before I came, you could make him do anything. Make her do anything. But now grace answers at the door. And he says, go back. This man is no more for you. This woman is no more for you. You will overcome the tempter. You'll overcome the temptation. All the things that the devil will bring in your life, praise the Lord, you now can deny all those things and say, no, I can't stand your will stand. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live. How do I live? I said, how do you live? I should live soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? I said, where? In that same place of work, that same professional uh, association, and in that place where you have had difficulty, and you are always ashamed. They call you pastor, pastor. They, when they say that, they want to, you know, tell you to do something, and so that you'll be ashamed and drop your head, uh, then they bring uh, their bombshell. But... From now on, in this present world, I said, in this present world, you raise up your head, you square your shoulders, and when those people come and they used to, the name they used to call, when they make want to make you submit, you look up and they can tell it's no more a victim. I'm no more a victim. Victory will come in Jesus' name. And the grace within you will say no to the enemy and to the tempter. You will live soberly. You will live righteously. And you will live godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us who gave himself for me, who gave himself for me, who gave himself for me. Why? Because I wanted something from heaven. I wanted some blessings from heaven. And my hand couldn't reach heaven. I jumped. I couldn't reach. I fasted. I couldn't reach. 
I denied myself. I couldn't reach. And I'm looking for that thing. And Jesus Christ, the ladder that goes from earth to heaven, he says, don't worry. And he puts the ladder at my feet. And because he is the ladder, everything I need now, I don't even have to stretch too much. He gave himself for me. Now I receive. I said, now I receive the days of poverty, spiritual poverty, and the days of regret and crying. All those days are gone in Jesus' name. The days of being anemic, no blood, no strength, no energy, no power, no authority, just barely living, almost dying. Those days are gone. Life has come. Abundant life has come. Spiritual life has come. And eternal life has come. And it has come for you. I said it has come for you. He gave himself for us. I always remember that. And in this coming year, if there's something I'm to do, and the devil wants to remind me, I'm actually talking, you know, to you. I'm making myself an example. Is that all right? And then the devil says, you're not strong. You cannot do that. Because it's not like, you know, before when you could jump up and run up and down and all that. I say, let me read a verse to you. You know, this coming year, if the devil comes, I read the Bible to him. This coming year, if the tempter comes, I say, hold on, hold on. I'll open the Bible and read the Bible to them. And you know how I read the Bible? I read from Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus and Numbers and the and Joshua and Judges and everywhere. It says, that's enough, that's enough. And they will run away. Because, you understand, he, Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Sanctifier, our Healer, He gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity. That He might redeem us from, tell me, all iniquity. No iniquity will find root in your life. No sin or transgression will find root in your life. There is no place to stay. It's like if you plant, if you plant a seed on dry ground, rocky ground, stony ground, that thing will dry up. And if the devil tries to come and plant iniquity in your life, iniquity in your soul, there's no fertilizer in your heart for iniquity. It will dry up. I said it will dry up. I said it will dry up. You will live a righteous life. And then it says to purify, to purify unto himself, he will wash you clean. He will purge you. He will purify you. And you'll become a peculiar person, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. I can't hear my people. Because of that great grace, we then offer unto the Lord better gifts. Point number two now, our offering of better gifts. Our offering of better gifts. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. We're reading from verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By faith... Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. A more excellent sacrifice than sinful Cain. A more excellent sacrifice than self-centered Cain. A more excellent sacrifice than self-willed Cain. A more excellent sacrifice than stubborn Cain. As you look at Cain, he was a sinner. Abel too was a sinner. But Abel came to the Lord and he brought 
a better sacrifice unto God. And he said, I cannot bring the works of my hand. That will not save me. But I take a substitute, a lamb. And he offered that to God. And that was acceptable to God. But Cain, sinful Cain, he said, my good works are good. My crops are better. And you offered that unto God. And God said, no, I don't want that. The earth is cursed. The land is cursed. And you're offering that to me. Look for something better. But Cain was self-willed. And when the Lord spoke to him, he will not answer. He will not give the sacrifice that God expected. And Cain was selfish, self-centered. And what he thought is what he wanted to do. He was stubborn. If your sacrifice has not been accepted, the sin offering is at the door. But that man was self-centered, self-willed, and stubborn, and sinful. I will not be another king. I said, I will not be another king. By, by, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. The blood of the Lamb cleansed him, forgave him, made him righteous, and there's a greater Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world as you touch him, as you rely on him, all your sins are taken away. And he makes you righteous in Jesus' name. God testifying of his gifts, better gifts. God testifying of his gifts. And by each being dead, yet speaketh. You notice that it says, by faith. Look at Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 23. Romans chapter 14. We're reading from verse 23. Look at this. Look at what it says. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat. Because he eateth not of faith. What we're looking for is the last line. For whatsoever is not of faith, tell me, a sin. Whatsoever is not of faith, any sacrifice that is not of faith, any offering that is not of faith, any giving that is not of faith, any help that is not of faith, any ministry that is not of faith is seen in the sight of God. Whatever we offer, there are people that offer their time. There are people that offer their talent. There are people that offer their tithes and offering. There are people that offer material things. There are people that offer a service, a sacrifice. If it is not of faith, it is sin. If it is not of love, it is sin. If it is not according to the scriptures, according to the demand and desire of God, however good that thing may be, it is sin. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. His offer of boundless grace. Point number two, our offering of better gifts. Point number three, the outpouring of his best to the godly. The outpouring, the overflowing, and the outflowing of his best to the godly. The Lord is going to give you the very best. You will enjoy the very best. Every day of this coming year, the best of God, the best of gifts, the best of benefits, the best of the Spirit, 
the best of power in your life in Jesus name look at first Corinthians chapter 12 first Corinthians chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 31 first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 but covet honestly the best gifts there are people that don't desire anything they don't demand anything all the preaching all the promises everything when we say let us pray they keep quiet they're looking here and there brother won't you pray why do i pray whatever god wants to give me is a loving god let him give me sister won't you pray why pastor should i pray whatever god wants to he knows i'm here and he knows what he wants to give me let him give me but it says you covet earnestly with all your strength with all your stamina with your voice clear and with your desire with the passion covet earnestly what kind of gifts the best gifts look at um, chapter 14 verse 1 chapter 14 verse 1 follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts desire run after that pray on that you pray here when you get back home you spend some time you say lord i realize you have a lot for me promises power provision every good thing i can have i covet it now i desire it now i demand it now desire spiritual gifts you will have them first corinthians chapter 1 verse 5 in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 5 it says that in everything ye enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge that you look at your life this area i'm a father this area i'm a preacher this area i'm a worker this area i'm a community man this area i'm this and in all those areas you say lord put your grace in my life that i will be the best in every area in jesus name some are good in church but they're not so good at home some are good in the office open doing but they are not available in the church some are good to their friends but they are good to brothers and sisters in the church look at all the areas of your life and say this year i'll be my best i'll do my best i retain the best in my life in jesus name you know, there are some people, see them now for some hours, they're cheerful, they're passionate, they're loving, they're smiling, everything is okay. After about two hours, they've come to their limit. If you meet them at that time, you say to yourself, I understand, I understand. It's been nice and vigorous and excited and it's been so good and wonderful and now we're having uh, the remnant of what remains it will not be so in your life yeah. even in the evening it will mean that the strength of the morning is still there in your life in the afternoon when the sun is up and when you've been here and there the power the excitement the unction the ability of the morning will still be there in your life in jesus name so that in every area of your life there's you know not a period somebody will find you happy another time sad another time uh, progressive another time drawing back look at that verse 5 that in everything in everything in everything uh, ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge 
even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Look at verse 7. So that ye come behind in no gift. Ye come behind in no gift. You'll not be at the tail. I said you'll not be at the tail. You'll be in the forefront in Jesus' name. That you not come behind waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything you need to have that better life, better offering, better gift, the Lord will give unto you. I'm reading now from Hebrews chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6, but now as he obtained a more excellent ministry, that's Christ, that's our Savior, that's our Redeemer, ministry to minister to us, ministry to minister to his church, ministry to minister to his bride. Now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also is the mediator of a better covenant. The covenant is for us, and the provisions of the covenant, they are for us, and is better than the old covenant, which was established upon better promises. Look at verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not. They continued not in my covenant so I regarded them not. They did not regard me, so I regarded them not. They did not respect me, so I regarded them not. They did not honor me. They did not observe my way, so I regarded them not. I wanted to bless them and do good unto them and give them the provisions of my covenant, but they didn't pay attention to me, so I regarded them not. I pray God will regard you. I pray God will honor you. But you know, if you don't regard the word of God, if you don't accept the word of God, if you say, what are they going to stop all this? Are we going to read the whole Bible in one message? Thank God you are receiving the word of God. Thank God you regard him. Thank God you receive him. He will regard you. Look at verse 10. For this, the covenant that I will make of the house of Israel at those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Will be the people of God. Look at chapter 12, chapter 12. We're reading from verse 22, chapter 12. We're looking at verse 22. It says in verse 22, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all the earth, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus. We have come to Jesus. I said, We have come to Jesus, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh, tell me, better things than that of Abel. That's Christ. That's our Lord. We have come to him. He blessed others before us. He will bless you. Chapter 13 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. 
reading from verse 8. In verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, he'll prove himself the same in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that are occupied therein. Look at verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, so much without the gate. Verse 13, let us go forth therefore unto him, everyone, in this end of the year, let us, all of us, those who are saved, those who are sanctified, those who are filled with the Holy Ghost, young people, adults, young adults, everyone, members, ministers, invitees, newcomers, let all of us go forth, therefore, unto him without the calm, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. That city will get there. Yeah. I will get there. Verse 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect. Can you be perfect? I said, can you be perfect? A perfect believer. A perfect minister. A perfect husband. A perfect wife. A perfect brother. A perfect sister. A perfect helper make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom the glory forever and ever forever and ever the better days have come now the better life has come now. The better provision has come now. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And we're reading from verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. And they shall increase and bring forth fruit. And I will settle you. I am settled. I said, I am settled. I said, look at the coming year. I'm not panicking. I am settled. I said, look at the way and the past before me. I'm not fretting and fidgeting. I am settled. As you go back home, and you look outside the door, outside the glass of your vehicle, look beyond. Your future is bright. Yeah. Because now he has settled you. Yeah. And then he says in that verse 11, I will do better unto you than at your beginning. Yeah. Do you know you are going to make speedy progress? Yeah. Great progress irreversible progress because it will do better unto you than at your beginning and you shall know that I am the Lord you will know it look at verse 37 verse 37 of that same chapter does says the Lord God I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. 
Don't just fold your hand and close your mouth and close your eyes and just say, he will do it because he said he will do it. He said, you must spend time and you must call upon him. I will yet for all this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them and I will increase them with men like a flock. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. Amen. And he will make you and the places round your house a blessing. Yeah. And I will cause shower to come down in a season. Yeah. There shall be showers of blessing. Yeah. The rain is beginning to fall. Yeah. The blessings are beginning to come down. Yeah. The refreshing is beginning to come yeah. upon you upon your household, upon your children, upon your parents, upon every loved one, there shall be showers of blessing. It's beginning right now. What are you? Why don't you rise up and tell him, let those blessings come. The very best of God, the very best of God for you, even at this time. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. You should pray beyond all the prayers you prayed during the year. Desire. Demand. Be passionate about it. Lord, I need you. More of you. Your very best for my life. No sorrow, no shame, no suffering, no failure, no iniquity, no sin, no transgression, free. For the abundance of the grace of God in your life, free. For the boundless grace of God in your life, free. Grace and peace. There will be peace in your heart. Peace in your mind. Peace in your soul. Peace. Purity. Purity in your heart. Purity in your imagination. Purity in your soul. Purity in your character. Purity in your utterance, purity in your mouth, purity in your touch, purity in your communication, grace, and purity. You know the provision of the Lord for you? Desire them. Possess them. You know the promise of the Lord for you? Hold on to them, standing on the promises that cannot fail. Healing, available. Health, available. Deliverance, available. Redemption, available. Total freedom, available. Grace, grace, grace. Marvelous grace that is greater than all your sin. Infinite grace, overflowing grace, surpassing grace. Available. Receive more than enough. Whatever despair, like the sea was cold, is upon your life. 
There's grace, full, free, abundant. He responds to the abundant grace of God. Give of yourself to the master. No holding back. Give the very best of yourself, the very best of your talent, the very best of your service, and give it by faith. Give it in love. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatever you give grudgingly, not acceptable, a sin. Whatever you give grumbling, that's not by faith, a sin. Whatever you give complaining to your friend, complaining to your husband, complaining to your wife, whatever you give complaining, murmuring, it's not of faith, it's sin. Your tithes and offering, give cheerfully. Your money, material things, give happily. Your substance, give happily. Do what will bring a blessing upon your life this year. Your strength, your physical energy. Your time, your training. The church doesn't have to run after you. Make yourself available. We don't know what you have to offer. You are the one that will say, I have this to offer, I have this to offer, I can offer this. And you give honestly, transparently, single-mindedly, cheerfully. You're not being an ananas or sapphire. And then you ask the Lord, the promised outpouring, the promised outpouring, the promised overflowing blessing. Here am I, Lord, pour it on me. He says, prove me now herewith. If I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that you will not have enough room to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Your amen has reached heaven. And your blessings from heaven will come down mightily in Jesus' name. Every promise of God in your life, every prophecy of the Lord in your life, every provision of the Lord in your life, they are all done and fulfilled in Jesus' name. Clear as crystal pure as a diamond and nothing will reverse the promise of God, the power of God in your life in Jesus name Father in Jesus name we thank you for your love we thank you for your grace we thank you for your thinking about every one of us I'm asking, O oh Lord, as you have promised So will it be done in every life in Jesus' name 
for everyone, everywhere, whether in, at the headquarters here in Lagos or in the suburb in Lagos or in Lagos State or in all the states of Nigeria, all the countries in Africa, all the countries everywhere beyond Africa.